question number 12 is integration of the trig function. We give you one, two parts. The first part would be just uh, taking care of the integral of the sine inverse, which are going to, you are going to use this formula uh, to do it, the first one. And the second one would be involve a tangent inverse. And this is the one that we didn't do. So we continue to finish this number 12. Okay. So this is uh, final review. Okay, that's the final review. And we continue with the problem number number 12. Okay, you want to evaluate each integral again. So that was the question. So evaluate each integral. And we give it a hint. Just uh, the hint would be using inverse trigonometric function. Inverse trig functions. So that make it different from uh, all the other. You are going to have lots of questions on the integrations. Integration by substitution, okay. Definite integral and this group that's going to be integrating using inverse ergonometric uh, uh, functions. Okay, for this uh, new group, uh, you need only this formula. The formula is integral of one over a squared plus u squared. Okay, du is simply is going to be equal to the one over a. Okay, tan inverse, tan inverse of u over a plus the constant c. When you, this is a squared, when you want to find the a, you have to take the square root. So we get a positive square root. Okay, so this would be the, the, the target that we are going to have. If this a is going to be equal to one, and that would be a straightforward. If this is going to be the case, so there is going to be simply tan inverse of u plus uh, u plus c. Okay, and there are only two cases, and uh, you should be able to do it. Uh, uh, okay, you should be able to do it uh, right away. Okay, so. This is going to be, let me just bring it, that's number number 12. Okay, so that's what they mean to 12a. So a part a, you want to find this integral, integral of one over, okay, one over nine plus x squared dx. So as soon as you see the denominator is of the form of the tan inverse. Since this is x, you don't need any u substitution. So we just identify the a and apply the formula and you're done. Okay, so the solution is going to be, if you like your a square is equal to the nine. So you take the positive square root. So your a would be, your a would be three. So we go to the formula. It's integral of one over nine plus x squared dx is going to be equal to the, one over a, one third. Okay, one third, tan inverse of, your u is, is just the x, is gonna be x over a, x over three, plus the constant c, and you're done. You see, that's a, that's a case one. Very uh, straightforward case. So as soon as you see it, you compare it with your formula. a squared is nine, so a would be three. Okay, a squared is nine, so a would be three. You just get this formula done. Any question? That's a type one. The type two is the one that you need a little bit of new substitution. So that's part one, part two. Part two is this one, integral of one over, you see four x squared plus, uh, plus three, and dx. Again, a denominator will tell you that it is of the type of the tan inverse, okay? This is the type of the tan inverse, but the difference is going to be, this is not x squared, it's four x squared. So you have to identify your u, you, you need a mini substitution. You have to apply the chain rule to change it into the format that you are familiar, a squared plus u squared. 
Okay, when it's x squared, you don't have to do any change. So this is it. This is four x squared. So your u would be your u would be two x. Okay, because two x squared would be four x squared. This is your u. So you have to find the du. Du would be the derivative of the two x, which is two. So it's going to be two times a dx. We're going to find the dx. So the dx is du over over two. Go back substitute. Go back substitute and change it into the format of, uh, okay, change it to the format of uh, one over uh, a squared plus u squared. So this is the original one. Original one is one plus one over four x squared plus three. The x is equal to four x squared is your u squared. So that would be one over u squared plus three. The dx is going to be du over two, du over two. So there is extra factor one half, you put it out. So that gives you one half integral of one over u squared plus three and the du. So you change it to the, to the formula that you are interested in, okay? So your job is if it's not going to be x squared, you have to change it to the u. Make sure you don't forget to do the substitution method. Now, if you compare it again, your a squared is three. So a would be radical three. So I just remind you that in this case, okay? So you don't have to write this just for your information. a squared is three. So to use that formula, a would be radical three. So this one half is already there. But for the integral, one over a, a is radical three, one over radical three. Okay, tan inverse, tan inverse of u. Okay, u, u over u over radical three. Okay, and at the end, you can add the constant, constancy. Okay, but you have to substitute for u. u is two x. So it's gonna be equal to one half times one, uh, you, you just multiply this together would be one over two radical three. You don't have to rationalize it. You write it down in radical form. One over two radical three, a tan inverse, tan inverse of u. What is u? u is two x, two x over radical three plus the constant c. And then you're done. Okay, so two, two easy cases really. And uh, when it's a nine plus x squared is a straightforward, but when it's uh, anything else other than the x squared, you have to use the u substitution to change it. So uh, these are only possibilities that you are going to know you are going to have, and we give you one of them. Okay, any question? Now there is another one. This is I did I did it, and this would be used you know in calculus in calculus two. That would be only for your information. Okay, part uh, part C. It's a popular problem, but you know it's going to be given you on that course. But so for the time inverse, for the time being, this is it, and you're done. So that uh, famous uh, problem for calculus two is this one. You see, part C is a two x plus one over x squared plus one. I did it during the lecture, and I explain it again. You see, denominator is of the uh, tan inverse type because it's like uh, one plus x squared. But in order to do the tan inverse, you need a number on the top, like one over x squared plus one. So if it is going to be one over x squared plus one, that would be simply tan inverse. But there is an extra term, two x. So what you have to do, you have to break it. You have to break this one into the sum of two integrals. So, you know, it's like a fraction. You can, you know, this is it. You can break the like fractions, you see. It's the kind of trick that I just wanted to see it for future. So you can write it down as two X over X squared plus one and plus one over X squared plus one, you see. So that would be the point for the, for the type three that we have. Now, this would be just end up with the tan inverse. 
And for this one, you know, there is a rational function. You take the bottom to be u. If you take the bottom to be u, u prime is 2x. So it's a kind of u prime u. You know that u prime u is the derivative of ln u. So this part would be ln of the x squared plus 1. And this part would be tan inverse of x. So since they, you know, we can match these two together, that's a, a popular, okay, a popular case. So this is how we're going to do it. It's a 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 and dx. You break it into parts. The part would be 2x over x squared plus 1. Okay, that's part 1. And the plus 1 over x squared plus 1. That's a part 2. Now you break it into integral. So the first one is going to be 2x over x squared plus 1 dx, and the second one would be 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So for the first one, as I talked about it, it's like this is u. So the top one would be u prime. So it's u prime u. u prime u is a derivative of the ln function, ln of the bottom. So this would be equal to ln we usually use the absolute value, but x squared plus 1 is a positive number. So you don't need the absolute value. Ln of x squared plus 1, the first one. And the second one would be tan inverse of x. But always you add the constant c together. Okay, so that would be something for, for future considerations. But this is one of the problem in your assignment. So I just want to make sure in case you want to see the solution of that uh, assignment okay and this is uh, going to be this is going to be the the case okay so this is uh, going to be okay that is uh, going to be the case any question so uh, that would uh, do the you know the problems the new problems on the on the review uh, everything else is already done, but I do the practice quiz first, then I come back and do, for example, the mean value theorem, because you are going to see one question from the mean value theorem and just do a couple of the average value for you. But otherwise, the rest, just check the solution of the <clears throat> solution of mostly a practice quiz number four that we did it before. Okay, so this quiz is important to make sure that you know you you did it all right, and you are going to be able to do it again for us uh, starting today. So six questions from that quiz would be repeated again. So this is uh, uh, quiz number four. Okay, quiz number four. Answer key for that quiz. And so uh, the pattern would be the same for the for the final for this quiz. Uh, the first part you are going to differentiate for us. Okay. So question number one, we want to find the derivative of each function. <coughs> find the derivative. Okay, the derivative of each function. So, you know, you are going to have one for the sine inverse, sine inverse, but this is, uh, this is for the natural log and the exponential function. So for this question, the formulas that you need are going to be the following. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. But if it's going to be anything else other than the x, derivative of ln u is going to be u prime u. And derivative of e to the u you know that's going to be e to the u times u prime. So this is the formula for this question uh, to be to be done. Okay, it's going to be one of these uh, natural log type and one with the exponential one. So uh, the, in this question, uh, the part one, the part one, the function is f of x equal to f of x equal to the five x squared ln x. That's f of x. Now it's a product of two functions. 
So you take this one to be your first function, and this is going to be your second function. So we need to apply the product rule. So derivative of the product of two function is derivative of the first one times the second one plus derivative of the second one times the first one. Okay, derivative of the first is easy. It's a five X squared. Okay, five X squared derivative would be 10 X. So that's the derivative first times second. If the second times first, the second is ln x. So the derivative would be one over x. Okay, so there you are. F prime of x equal to if you of the first 10 x times the second plus if you of the second times first, ln x, the derivative of ln x is one over x, one over x times it by the first one. Times it by the first one means times it by five x squared. Now you get a chance to simplify this and you must simplify it. You see one x out, so that gives you five x. So the final answer is f prime of x is equal to 10 x ln x, okay, plus five x. So that would be the final, the final answer. Okay, so it's a, it's an easy procedure, but a very popular, popular case. Okay, that's a part, uh, part of one. So your formula are available and you got your formula with you on the test. So you should be able to do it right away for us. Okay, well, for this case, you don't need any U substitute, you only any chain rule. So the second one, the second one, uh, the function is the G function, G of X equal to LN of X squared plus X plus one. You see the inside is not ln x, it's ln of something else. So you take this one to be u. So you have to find the derivative of ln u. Okay, remind yourself that derivative of ln u is simply u prime u. Just uh, copy the formula. Okay, so what is going to be g prime of x? g prime of x is equal to u prime, derivative of the inside, which is going to be 2x, okay, 2x plus 1, divided by u, which is x squared plus x plus 1. You see, don't try to do anything about it. You cannot simplify this one. So this is the end of the problem. Don't do anything else to, okay, to make a mistake. So that's going to be the case too. So the case one, the product rule, you don't need any, a chain rule formula, and the second one, you don't need it. You prime you. Okay, so that's going to be part two. Any question? Of course, part C is this famous uh, uh, derivative. We talk about this function several times. It's a kind of revenue function. It's going to be used in some other part of calculus. 100x times e to the negative 0.05x. It's used in business, so negative 0.5 is like the 5%, is kind of the rate. You invest money in the bank, in the, you know, that's the one, you're selling something, X is the number of the item that you sell, yeah, okay? And that would be your revenue, if you like. So that's why we are interested in this question. Again, uh, it's a product of two function. You see, this is gonna be a first function. This is the first. And this is going to be the second. So we have to apply the product rule. We have to have the first times second plus the second times first. If you have the first one easy, 100x would be 100 times the second. If you have the second times first, it's exponential function, never change. But remember, you have to multiply by u prime. Some people miss the u prime here. Okay, so this is going to be the answer. F prime of x is equal to if of the first one, if the 100x, 100, 100 times the second one, e to the negative point, 0.05x. That's it. Now plus second first second, exponential function never changed, so we repeat it. But you have to multiply by u prime. If of the top, it's going to be negative 0.05. But you have to multiply by the first by the first. 
Okay, but you're not done. You must simplify it. Remember monomials. Monomials, you multiply these together. 0 0.05 times 100 would be five. So it's a negative five X and you put it up in front. So F prime of X is going to be equal to the 100. E to the negative point is zero five X. And this would be minus, minus five X E to the negative point zero five X. So that gives you the final, the final answer. You cannot do anything about it. Uh, later on, we are going to see it when we want to find the max and the mean. We may factor out E to the negative point zero five, but not for this one. Okay, so that would be the derivative part of the question on the this exponential function and the natural log function. So you have a similar one for the sine inverse and the tan inverse that we did it yesterday. Okay, so we get kind of two questions on the differentiation only. One for the this exponential function, the natural log function. The other one simply for the, okay, for the tan inverse and the sine inverse. So, so far, that would be two questions for the final. Okay, so that's the question number one. Question number two, of course, uh, we would like you to be able to use the Lopter rule, okay, to find the limit for us. We give me one. This is uh, the only question on the limits that you're going to see. Okay, so this is it, question number two. Number two, we give you the hint, apply. You have no other choice, of course, but we give you the hint that you are allowed to use it. Apply the, the Hopital rule. Okay, Loptal, that's it. Apply the Loptal rule to evaluate limits. Okay, that's it. To evaluate each limit. The case, you know, that we apply it when we get in the terminal form. So the cases are going to be zero, zero infinity over infinity or zero times infinity. Our three cases, we give you two of these three, okay? Like the one that you have over here. So the first one is a famous exponential form. So the first one, uh, part one, you want uh, to find uh, this limit, limit of, okay, it's gonna be limit of e to the four x minus four uh, x minus one, divided by five x squared when x goes to zero. Again, these are the type of limits that's gonna be, if you take calculus to, it's very popular over there. And they do have another method to do it. They say method of power series. But in this course, we're just using the Hopital rule to do it. Now you have to substitute to show that you are, you are going to arrive at zero, zero. If you don't arrive at zero, zero, you cannot use the Hopital rule. Okay, so the, you have to test that. So uh, this is going to be the solution. You know, we can quickly substitute. This is going to be the case. If you put the zero, it's e to the zero. That would be zero. And that's in minus one. And this is going to be zero. e to the zero is one. So one minus one over zero. So we get the zero, zero in the terminal form. So you have to convert it, remember. Now you go back and we use the Hobbiter rule. Okay, so we go back to the original one. You have to rewrite it. You keep the limit e to the 4x minus 4x minus 1 over 5x squared, x goes to 0. Hobbiter rule. You know that. Hobbiter rule will tell you that and this limit is going to be the same as the limit of the derivative of the job divided by the derivative of the bottom. So you repeat the limit again, x goes to zero. Now the top, e to the four x, we know that the exponential function never change, but you have to multiply by u prime, the top. Derivative of the top is four. So it's a four e to the four. Some people, they miss this four. If you miss it, you cannot continue. So if you cannot continue, you just go back, probably you miss this four. Okay, derivative of the e to the x is e to the x. But it's going to be e to the 4x is e to the 4x times the u prime. Okay, minus the of the 4x would be just minus 4. The of 1 is 0. The of the bottom one would be 10x, 10x. 
you substitute again, if you substitute zero, so that gives you zero, zero again. It's going to be four e to the zero minus four over zero, four minus four would be zero. So that gives you zero, zero again. So it means we are not done. We continue this. Okay, so we continue, we say, oh, hope that rule again. So this would be the limit of x goes to zero. Repeat it. Derivative of the 10 x would be 10. The top again you have to differentiate e to the 4x e to the 4x would be just e to the 4x but remember you have to multiply by 4 so there is another 4 here so 4 times 4 would be would be 16 okay e to the 4x e to the 4x times your prime which is 4 so another 4 make this one to the 16 and this would be this would be 0 so you arrive at the limit of as 16 e to the 4x divided by 10. x goes to 0. Now you substitute. If you substitute, the top is going to be 16 e to the 0. And the bottom 10, e to the 0 is 1. So we get 16, 10. You have to simplify it. The answer by, simplify by 2. So that gives you 8 fifth, the final, the final answer. OK, so this is the way you handle it. And this is the way you are going to write it down for us. Uh, I've seen some people, they, they don't write this limit, you lose point because the limits are the same, not just, you know, the these expressions. The limits are going to be the same thing. Okay, so that's a case one, very popular case, very popular case for the exponential function. Okay, that was part one. Okay, the part two is the, the case is zero times infinity. So we are going to be interested in, and we give you a similar one again. So that is going to be case two. So the case two is going to be the limit of, okay, the limit of the radical x, ln x. ln x, when x goes to zero, positive. That's it. Now, we substitute first, x goes to zero positive, this would be zero. And we already talked about it, limit of ln x, when x goes to zero positive is a negative infinity. So this would be equal to the zero times negative infinity as an indeterminate form. So confirmation first. So the confirmation is that the limit of radical x, ln x, when x goes to zero positive, that gives you zero times a negative infinity. So that would be indeterminate form. Now, how are we going to take care of it? If you want to use the Hopital rule, you need quotient. Okay, you need the quotient so that you'll be able to do it. So we are going to change this product into a division. The way we do it, it's a limit of radical x, ln x, x goes to zero positive. It's going to be equal to the limit of, get the fraction bar, put the ln x, uh, keep the ln x as is, but you have to bring this one down. Bring it down, you have to use the reciprocal if you like. You see, this is gonna be one over radical x. x goes to zero, zero positive. Okay, so you would like to switch it into the uh, rational form. You keep the ln x on the top, flip the whatever it is. Okay, if you know, if you rewrite it as x to the one half, you can go with the x to the negative half but all the time. So they are not equal to each other. They are going to be equal if you get ln x over one over radical x, not ln x divided by radical x. Now you switch this one to the, so that give you the limit of ln x, and this would be x to the negative half, x goes to zero positive. So now you get the infinity over infinity, and you can use the Hopital rule. Okay, so that would be the key operation to change it, to be able to do it. The rest are just uh, Hopital rule. This is it, you go with the Hopital rule or Lopta rule. The limit would be the limit, uh, then x goes to zero passive. Derivative, derivative of ln x is simply one over x. And derivative of negative x to the negative half would be negative half x to the Okay, x to the negative three halves. Now we have to simplify it. 
Uh, there are different ways to simplify it. You can switch into the positive exponent and then divide, or just move this one up. Depends on, you know, but uh, this it would be safe. That would be one over X. And this would be negative one over, you bring this one down, two to the X to the three half. When it's a radical, you know, there is algebra involved. And when there is no radical, that's much, much easier. But uh, it's not a big deal. So it's uh, X goes to zero positive. It's a division of two fraction. You write the first one, multiply by the reciprocal of the other one. So it's going to be limit of. So the top one is one over X, multiply by the reciprocal. You flip it. So that give you negative, if you like, a two X to the three halves over one. X goes to zero positive. Now you simplify the power. The, the top is three half, three half, 1.5. And this is one. So one out of 1.5, the leftover would be 0.5 or just one half. So this is going to be equal to the limit. X goes to zero positive. So the top, you get negative two, X to the half. The bottom one is one. But X goes to zero. If you replace X by zero here, so that gives you zero on the top. So that gives you zero divided by one and zero divided by any number is equal to the zero. Okay, so this limit is always zero. It doesn't matter whether you know. You may get X squared ln X on the final or X cubed ln X. Those are going to be easier. But the answer, the final answer is going to be always the same. Okay, so the crucial part is this one. And don't miss it. It's a product. As long as it's a product, you can't do anything about it. You have to change it to the fraction to be able to do it, a rational function. The way we change, we keep the ln x on the top and we flip the radical x. Okay, or we divide it by the reciprocal of the radical x. Then the rest are going to be algebra. We change to the x to the negative one half because you want to differentiate it. You differentiate. Then you have to simplify it again when it's not a radical, it's easy here, but not big deal. You write the first one. You see, I change the negative power into the positive first. Then it's a product, uh, I change to the product. It's gonna be the product of the first one times the reciprocal of the, the second one. So you simplify it, X to the 1.5, X to the first. So the result's going to be 1.5 on the top or half. When you replace the x by zero, so that gives it on the top, the answer would be zero and you're done. Okay, so that's a question on the on the application of the Lobdahl rule. Any question? So get practice, on, although you did the quiz, but you have a similar one on that uh, final review and you know practice quiz number four. So you have them, you have the solution of all of them. So repeat it again for yourself, just make sure you are ready for it. Okay, so that would be question number two on this quiz. And the second question from this concept on the final. So, so far, derivative of trigonometric function, derivative of the exponential function, Ln function, and the Hopital rule. So, so far, Hopital rule, that gives you three questions so far. Okay, now the fourth topic or the third problem on the test is optimization problem. So, we would like to, you to find the maximum and the minimum for us. And the function that we are going to be interested in are not going to be polynomials like the past. Uh, okay. Oh, in this, yeah, that's the number two. Where is the optimization problem? Oh, that's enough. Okay, I go, go with the order that you have over here. And the next uh, question is the average value. We didn't have average value before, so now this is the chance to have it. Like the, the temperature function that I did before, read that one from the final review. So number three, one question on the average value of a, a function, okay? So you would like uh, to find, that's it, find the, the average value, average value of each function. So you need the formula. <clears throat> this is the formula that you have to bring for this part, the average value. 
average value of the f function is going to be equal to the 1 over b minus a integral from a to b f of x dx is like the integral but you have this extra condition over here so you need this formula to be able to find the average value there are going to be two groups polynomial types but we usually give you something exponential or something like a trigonometric one uh, so in this uh, part uh, the part one again very famous problem from uh, from business mostly the function is f of x equal to 100 e to the okay 100 e to the 0 0.04 0.04x and you want to do it on this interval 10 and 50. Now I told you before for this type of problems okay uh, for the average value there is a there are some famous integral that may happen and then you can use this short form I listed here for you again so the the short form are going to be if you want to find the integral of e to the e to the a times x means a number only the shortcut for otherwise you have to use your substitution you see exponential function never change it's going to be e to the ax but remember when we differentiate we multiply by u prime which is a when you integrate it you divide you see easy over here you see you have e to the 0.04 you just use this one it's going to be integral would be e to the 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.04 and then you that you can do it for the trigonometric function as well so i write the the sign for you but you can do it for all of them if you have a sign of ax dx integral of a sign would be negative cosine so it's going to be negative cosine of the ax but you divide it by this a plus c so you know you can do it with the tangent you can do it with the cosine but the sine and the cosine are popular because you may you may have to take the temperature problem that we talk about it it's going to be sine because there are going to be lots of decimals so it would be messy but if you know this make it so easy for you okay so you can do you can use these two formulas on the test without any reservation if you like okay there you are so uh, just use the formula uh, a is the smaller number 10, B is 50. So write your formula and then you substitute. So the solution is going to be the average value of your function is equal to the one over B minus A, 50 minus 10. 50 minus 10, integral of from 10 to 50, 10 to 50 function. 100 e to the point 04 x dx that's it so exactly the given given formula so we can simplify this you can pull out the 150 minus 10 would be 40 so that would be 100 and this would be 40 and you have integral from 10 to 50 okay exponential function for the integral, you can use the short form. So this would be, you know, if you want to simplify it a little bit, it's going to be 10 over four, which is going to be five half. Five half, now exponential function would be just exponential function, e to the, sorry, that's positive. Okay, e to the a point zero four x divided by a, a is 0 0.04. So 0 0.04, that's it. That is got to be evaluated from 10 to 50. There is no C here because it's a definite integral. Okay, so, you know, if you know this formula that make it easy for you for the, for the average value. Now you have to simplify it first, then substitute. It's a 0 0.04, you can multiply these two together. So this is going to be five, Two times four would be eight, zero, eight. Okay, and this is going to be e to the 0.04x. You can use your calculator if you like to you substitute first and then you get it. 
Okay, if you don't want to use calculator, this is, uh, there are the two zeros here, you put two decimals here, you, you put the two zeros on the top and forget about the decimals. Okay, that's going to be the one. Then you substitute. So you substitute e to the 50 first, point zero four times 50 minus e to the point zero four times 10. Okay, and you can use calculator to get these, these numbers, you know, numbers done. But um, a little bit uh, simplification as much as uh, we, we can, uh, okay. So we can uh, simplify this one by, uh, by four. So that give you 125, okay, 125 over two. So that would be e to the, uh, four times five would be 2200. So that give you e to the two, if you like. 0 0.05 times uh, times 50, so the four times uh, 50 would be 202. So this is going to be minus, okay, minus e to the again over here that gives us uh, 0.4. So that gives you point, uh, point 0.4. Okay, then you have to use your calculator to get you know to estimate it to give us this number. Okay. So uh, this is uh, going to be the, the calculator that I have. Uh, so I go with the, this is it. I go with the E square first. Uh, so where is the E? That is E squared. Okay, E squared minus, uh, minus uh, E to the point uh, four, that is, Point uh, four, so that gave me five point eight, and then I multiply by, so it's going to be multiplied by uh, one twenty five uh, over two sixty two point five sixty two point five. So this should be the final the final answer. Okay, uh, three hundred and sixty five. I can say point. Uh, so you can check it, you know, with your calculator as well. So it's going to be 368.6. So that gives you the average value. Since it's average value, you have to know, you have to, to find it for us. You know, most of the time it's, you know, it's a, a kind of application problem. Okay, so the average value, average value is going to be almost uh, this one. You can call it 369. So, this is how you find this average value. Any question? So that shortcut would help you quite a lot, okay? Because you know, in business and in application, this function are popular, so you better know it in advance. And then as soon as you use the formula, just uh, substitute together. Okay, and sometimes there may be an extra term here. You see the function would be something like uh, 2x plus, as we did it during the review, you can do it uh, separately to get these numbers. Okay, so expect something uh, kind of application types for the average value. Uh, we have uh, one more, it's, it's a polynomial, but we are not going to give you something uh, straightforward like a polynomial, because we'd like you to be able to handle it in the future. Okay, so that's part one, any question? So check your calculator, make sure you are going to be able to operate this type of operations. Uh, part two is easy, it's just a polynomial. Okay, so the same thing, but I find the average value of this function. So the function is f of x, f of x equal to the 4x cubed, okay, minus 2x plus 5, and uh, it's going to be on negative 1 and 3. I'm going to give you an interval. Okay, again, you like your formula and stuff. That's a, that's a straightforward one. So the solution is going to be, remind you the formula again, the average value of the F function is simply one over B minus A integral from A to B. Okay, F of X DX. So your A is equal to negative three, the smaller number and your B is the bigger number, which is three. So we substitute. 
So when you substitute that going to be your average value is going to be equal to one over B minus A three minus be careful B A is already negative. So put the parenthesis negative negative one and then integrating from negative one to three the function four x cubed minus two x okay minus two x plus five dx okay this said uh, three negative negative one make it to the uh, three plus one so that would be a quarter so it's going to be equal to a quarter and you're integrating from negative one to three the function your function is going to be four x cubed minus two x plus uh, plus five Okay, easy function to integrate, just a polynomial. So it's going to be equal to a quarter. I start uh, integrating. Okay, I just put a bracket here to simplify the operation. It's going to be four. X cubed would be X to the fourth over four minus two. So that gives you X squared over two. And the, you know, the integral of the five would be five X but it is going to be evaluated from uh, negative one to three. So simplify it if you can, then substitute. So these two would cancel out. So you get a quarter. Okay, you get a quarter and the inside you have X to the fourth. So these two would cancel out that give you negative X squared. Okay, and the five X and the five X. Now you substitute negative one to three. Okay, you do it one by one. So it's going to be equal to the first one would be a quarter times uh, substitute three. So that gives it three to the fourth minus uh, three squared plus five times three. That's the first one. Now minus, you repeat it again, but this time you get the negative one. So that gives you negative one to the fourth minus negative one squared plus five times negative negative one. Okay, so that's gonna be the case. So it's equal to a quarter. Okay, it's gonna be equal to a quarter and a three to the fourth would be 81. Okay, minus nine plus 15. And it's gonna be negative quarter times Negative one to the fourth would be a positive one. It's a negative one squared, positive, but there's a negative outside, and that would be negative five. Okay, so it's going to be equal to a quarter. Uh, simplify these uh, numbers uh, to get it. Okay, that's going to be 81. Uh, this would be a six, uh, so it's going to be 87. Okay, minus a quarter. And over here, that would be just a negative, negative five. So it's 87 over four plus five over four. Okay, so 87 and five would be 92. And you get the 92 over, uh, over four. Uh, you simplify it if it is uh, possible. In, in this case, it is possible because uh, that give you 23 on the top. So 23 is going to be the average. Okay, the average value of your function is equal to the 23, and then you're done. Okay, so expect one average value equation. It's not going to be two parts, it's too much. It's going to be only one part, and uh, make sure your formula is, uh, okay, is, is ready. Is ready and operated uh, correctly. Again, we are going to be interested in something with the exponential function or trigonometric function because these are the type that you may have to do it in future in your, your own disciplines. Okay, so that was a question on the average value. So that make it to the three questions on this quiz. And so far, you get five questions on the final. So one derivative of the exponential function, uh, trigonometric function, and the integral of the exponential function. Okay, any question? So let's take uh, one more topic. So, so that is, so that will take us to the integrations of the 
a function involving uh, integration involving exponential function and the ln function. So we did have some VIP types of problems. And this question related to that one, number four. In number four, it's a kind of a kind of use substitution that involve uh, this uh, maybe an ln function. So again, we want to evaluate this integral using substitution method. Again, they are going to be used in calculus two. Evaluate each integral, each integral by substitution method. We give it a hint. Okay, by substitution. Uh, so the first one is again very famous problem. You see integral of one over x is going to be ln x in this case to the to the seven. That's a type one. We talk about this group of functions. Uh, there may be this ln x, the power of the ln x on the top, or maybe down the bottom. Okay, very popular one. So the way we do it, you have to use u substitution. For the u substitution, you know that inside the parentheses is the one that you're going to call u. So it's going to be the same thing here. So for the solution, you take the u to be ln x. That's uh, step one. If you do everything all right, the target is one over, you see one over, you must get one over u to the seven. That's, you know, that's the role of the substitution. So u ln x, uh, so the du, you have to have ln x is one over x, so it's gonna be one over x dx. Cross multiply to get the dx. You multiply both sides by x. So the dx is going to be x at du. Go back substitute to get one over u to the seven. So this is it, original one, one over x ln x to the, to the seven. We substitute, this is one, x as is ln x is u, so that gives u to the seven. But you have the dx, which is x and du. You can think about that as x du over one. Now, that gives you the chance to simplify the x. Remember, you should end up with the u function only. So that makes it into the one over u to the seven du. You see the target. You know that there's a rational function and there is a power here, you move it up. If there is a no power here, is, this means the power is one. If you get one over u, the result would be ln u. But for this one, you have to move it up. So that make it u to the negative seven du. Now you integrate it, power rule, u to the negative six over the negative six plus the constant c. But remember no negative sign in your solution, minus one over, you bring that on, six uh, u to the six plus c. And you have to substitute for u. So negative one over six ln of x to the six power plus the constant c. This would be the final, the final answer. Okay, it's a very popular method and application of the is a natural uh, log function. So again, sometimes this LNX on the top, that would be easier. You have it in your, you know, in your review, in your practice quiz number four, just double check that one too. Okay, so that was the, the part one, any question? So again, you know, the group of a very famous problem. And the next one, again, this was the, the type that we use substitution method for trigonometric function. It can come with a sign, cosine tangent or secant. In this quiz, you have the, okay, you have the tangent. So you have a one over x squared, tan of one over x and dx. So it can come with a sine, cosine, a secant. And so for the tangent, you must know the formula because the formula for the tangent is different. So you must know this formula that uh, 
uh, this is it, integral of ln of, sorry, integral of the tan. Integral of the tan of x or tan of u. Uh, okay, this is it, uh, tan of uh, u du is simply ln of the absolute value of the secant of u plus c. This is the formula that you have to have it to be able to do it, okay? And it can it can come with the secant, and this is the secant type, integral of a secant u du is the ln of the absolute value of a secant of u plus a tangent of u. So sine and cosine, you know, that's easy to remember. But this one is not going to be the case. So your extra job is you are going to use the substitution. You take this one to be u and you change it into the tangent of u. Okay, so we take u to be one over x. That's going to be your u. Then you differentiate the u is equal to. You can move it up differentiate, or just quotient root if of the top bottom would be zero minus if of the bottom times top one divided by the bottom squared, but multiply by dx. Okay, so u is one over x differentiated. Cross multiply, you multiply both sides by x squared. So that gives you dx equal to negative x squared du. So that is your u and the dx substitute. So integral of one over x squared, tan of one over x dx is equal to integral of, you don't have anything for the x squared, so no worry, it's gonna be canceled out. This would be tan of u. Okay, tan of u, but uh, times the dx, what's the dx? Negative x squared du. Again, you can think about it as negative x squared over du, over what? Now these two would cancel out. The leftover is just a negative one. So we can put it out. So that gives a negative integral of the tan of u du. And you know the formula. Okay, so automatically uh, that's the best case or the worst case that we can have one over x, one over x squared. But you know, the others are just power x squared, x cubed. But then, uh, we are ready for it, so it's going to be negative ln of the absolute value of a secant of u plus the constant c, but u is one over x. So the negative ln of the absolute value of a secant of one over x plus the constant c as the final, the final answer. Okay, so this would be the substitution method for the, you are going to have quite a lot of substitution uh, from uh, like uh, from your test three. Okay, we did something like three questions on that one that would be repeated on the final. But besides the one that we did on test three, these are going to be new one. Okay, the new one because of these special cases, the function that you are going to, to have. Okay, so that would uh, integration of right, the substitution for the log function. Okay, I can give you a break, come back and uh, we finish the rest. So that's a uh, 907. Okay, 15 minutes, then I come back and come back around 9, 20, 22. Then I finish this one and I go with a couple of problems, like the mean value theorem, especially from there, from that trick. Okay, see then.
Okay, so that was the question number four. So we go to the question number number five. Number five again is a substitution type. Okay, these are the substitution problems that you have to use uh, either exponential function or the ln function. So it's going to be repeated again. So that is number five. Again, you want to integrate using a substitution method. So evaluate each integral, each integral by substitution. Okay, substitution. And uh, the, the method that, uh, you know, the only formula that you're going to use for this group are going to be uh, the fact that uh, if you have a uh, one over u du, so the result is going to be ln of the absolute value of u plus c. Okay, it's u substitution. You want to find the function, okay, whose derivative is one over u, that's ln u. And the other one is if you have e to the u du, okay, that would be e to the u plus c. So whatever is inside, you, you know, over here, you call it U and you create the DU. And over here, what's going to be on the top, you are going to call it, you know, call it U and then you do, you do the job. Okay. So that's the idea of uh, this question. So you have uh, part one. Part one, uh, you have the integral of, okay, X squared plus one x squared plus one, and this is going to be x cubed plus uh, three x uh, plus uh, seven and the dx. You see the idea is going to be you have a rational function, we talk about it. When you have a rational function and there is no parentheses here and the power, so what you have to do is you have to take this one to be u, okay? And you change it to the one over u. If there is going to be any power over here, you see like the square to the third to the fourth, then you move this one up. But always you are going to call the denominator to be u. So for the solution of this one, so we take the u to be the bottom one, x cubed plus three x plus seven. Okay, the target that you set is this one for this problem. That would be your target. And then you're going to get it. So that would be over u. So we get the differential of the u, which is going to be three x squared plus plus three. Okay, so that's going to be there your du. So you go back and substitute, you must get one over u. So we go to the original one and we substitute. You can call it i if you don't want to repeat it. It is going to be the top one, we don't have anything for it. Don't worry, we hope to cancel it out. The bottom one, this is called u. That's going to be your u times uh, the dx. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish this one. Uh, this is the du dx. Then I have to find the dx, which is going to be du over 3x squared plus 3. Sorry, I didn't get the dx. <laughs> Okay, so we go back, it's x squared plus one. This is going to be u and the dx. And the dx is du over three x squared plus plus three. So you want to simplify this. Sometimes you have an extra job like here. So your extra job is, this is x squared plus one. So what you can do is you can factor out the three. If you factor out the three here, that gives you x squared plus one again then x squared plus one and x squared plus one would cancel out. So the leftover is one third. So it's going to be equal to the one third integral of one over u and du. And that's our target. Okay, so it's going to be equal to the one third ln of the absolute value of u plus the constant c. But your u is x cubed plus 3x plus 7. So this is going to be equal to the one third 
ln of the absolute value of x cubed plus 3x plus 7 plus a constant c, and then you're done. Okay, again, it's a straightforward integral. Just make sure you don't miss it. So I repeat it again. It's very easy to recognize it because it's a rational function and there is no parenthesis here, no power. So you take this one to be u and the target is one over u. And sometimes, you know, the algebra part here, uh, there was a factor of the three here to be able to simplify it. And that gives you the final, the final answer. Okay, so that's a part one. Any question? Part two, of course, going to be exponential part. You are able to use this formula. Okay, and the case that we have here is, uh, so the part B is very unique case for this uh, course. Quite a lot in calculus too, but not over this one. It's simply x cubed, e to the negative x to the fourth, dx. Okay, you know that we can do only e to the u. So what you have to do is you have to take this one to be u, and you change it to your target. The target is this one, e to the u. So again, you must know it in advance that the substitution part is going to be this one. Okay, so this is going to be the solution. So you realize that your target is this. So what we do is we take the u to be negative x to the fourth. That's going to be u. Then the differential of the u, du, is equal to the derivative would be negative 4x cubed dx. Okay, and then you do the dx. So the dx is equal to, <coughs> sorry, dx would be equal to the du over negative 4x cubed. And go back substitute, get e to the u. So and this is it. Original one is x cubed e to the negative x to the fourth dx. We substitute. We don't have anything for the x cubed, so no worry. It's going to be canceled out. That would be e to the negative x to the fourth. We are going to call it u, so e to the u. Then the dx, what's a dx? dx is du over negative four x cubed. Now the x cubed and x cubed will cancel out. The leftover is one over negative four, which is the negative quarter. So you pull out the negative quarter, then you have your target. So it's equal to, it's gonna be equal to the negative quarter and the e to the u du as you target it. And you know that the exponential function never change. So this simply would be negative quarter, e to the u plus the constant c. You substitute for u, so negative quarter e to the u. What is the u? u is a negative x to the fourth plus the constant c, and you're done. Okay, again, it's a very unique case. It's a very unique case, and you know, they just this they change in these powers because we can't do anything else in calculus. Okay, in calculus one. So we already talked about that short form type when this was only a number e to the okay 0 0.04 that we did. But otherwise, this is going to be you know the, the term that we're going to have. Okay, so very famous substitution method for the natural log and the exponential function. Again, you are going to see it again on the on the final. So that was the case for the substitution method. Any question? So what is the, the last one? And the last one is optimization problem. So uh, one problem would be given to, we give you one for the ln function and one for the exponential function. And we ask for the maximum or the, or the minimum. Okay, so, and these are not going to be a difficult problem, but you've got to be careful about the algebra part. So this is a number six. So the number six is you would like to find, check the, the practice quiz number four for more problems. Find the absolute minimum. Find the absolute minimum. 
okay, absolute minimum value. Minimum value of this function of the function is f of x equal to x cubed minus 3 ln x. This is the function. <coughs> you know that you start with the domain of the function. <coughs> it's a natural log function, domain is positive numbers only. Then you differentiate it. You the derivative got to the zero to get the critical value or values. You drop back the critical values into the function and then you test it. You can test it with the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Okay, this is a very standard problem. So solution, domain first. Domain ln defined for the positive numbers only. Zero and positive infinity, that's a domain. Then F prime, derivative, if the of x cubed would be three x squared, minus three times ln x would be minus three times derivative of ln x, which is one over x. Okay, so you simplify it into the three x squared minus three over x. So that would be your F prime. You let it equal to the zero, to find the critical values. So f prime of x equal to the zero. So that gives it three x squared minus three over x equal to the zero. You have to solve this equation. You have to get rid of the x here. You can multiply both sides by x to get rid of the denominator, or since it's a single term, you can move it to the other side and do cross multiplication. So, you know, both methods are going to be all right. So I do the cross multiplication type. So that can be three over X. Then I cross multiply three X squared times X, that would be three X cubed equal to three. So X cubed would be one. And if you take the cube root, X equal to one is the only solution. Okay, remember no complex solutions. I've seen some people they use calculate, they use their calculator and give us three solutions. And the other two are complex numbers. There's no complex numbers in calculus. Okay, so you have only one critical value. Your critical value is one. You drop it back into the function. So we find f of one, which is going to be the candidate for the minimum value. So it's going to be one cubed minus three times ln of one. One cube would be one minus three ln one. With your calculator, you can check it. ln one is zero. So that gives one minus zero, which is equal to one. So f of one equal to one is the candidate. Okay, but you have to test it. Without test, you lose points. Now, for the test, we have two choices. We can use first derivative test. In that case, you have to check the sign of the F prime around one, or you can use the second derivative test, which is easier. Second derivative test, you find the second derivative and you drop this number in the F double prime and you get the concavity. So it's up to you. You can use either one, we don't mind. So uh, this is it, uh, testing. This thing, uh, this is it, your F prime is, it depends on the shape of the F prime, if you like. You see, both tests are gonna be easy to apply. The first or the second, but I'm going to use the second. Second derivative test. For the second, you have to find the second derivative, of course. F double prime. Uh, it's derivative of three X squared with six X. And this one over here, just kind of quotient rule, if of the top times one would be zero. Bottom top is a negative one, negative one positive. So that gives it three over X squared. Okay, now drop the one in it. F double prime of one, it's just six plus three is nine, it's positive. 
Remember, second derivative positive means this graph is curving upward, curving up. So we get a we get the minimum. So f of one equal to the one is usually is a relative minimum, but you don't have anything else. Okay, so this is going to be is the absolute minimum. Okay, absolute minimum of the of the function. So the mean value, you know, mean the minimum value of the function is equal to equal to one. Okay, so that's a very famous uh, famous problem and easy to uh, to to handle for the LN. It can come with the exponential function. You don't have it. I do one from the review so that you know that there are two cases. We may give you both of them or we may give you one of them. Okay, be, be prepared for it. Okay, so that was the question on the on the quiz. Any question? Read it again, even if you've done it already. And look, this is the way you have to do it. So I will create it and then you can see your, your mistakes. Okay, so I'll go back to the review. I'll give you one of these, but exponential one because you don't have it. Okay, so this would be a couple of new things from the review. Otherwise, you have the solution of the review. Just uh, check uh, your practice quiz and number four that we did. And uh, some of them are in uh, practice test number three. You have all the solutions. But uh, I would like to do a couple of them for you. So I do one of these bad exponential part. Uh, so it's like uh, uh, question number number four. They ask for the relative, let me see, relative uh, minimum, which is going to be the same as uh, this one. Okay, so I give you one of these exponential part. Make sure you remember it. We did this one, but I want to repeat it again. So this is going to be from the review. And this is going to be four uh, four B. Okay, four B. So I just uh, change it to the format that we are going to be interested in on the final. We want just to find the uh, okay, find the, the relative relative extrema means the maximum or relative extreme, maximum or the minimum of this function, okay, and the function is f of x equal to 4x e to the negative 2x. So we've got to know two types. The type that you did is ln function, the other type is going to be exponential one, okay? Now, as we did it for the other one, we go with the domain first, domain it's exponential function. You see the exponent is just a polynomial. So the domain of this function is all real number. That's the part one. Then you have to find the critical value. You have to differentiate it. So we have to use the product rule. Derivative of the first times second, if of second times first. So we go with the F prime. If of the first one, if of the four, X is four times the second function, e to the negative two x, plus derivative of a second times first. The second one is exponential function, never change. But remember u prime. u prime derivative of the top, which is a negative two, times it by the first, four x. Okay, got to be careful to, when you find this the derivative, it's a product of two function. The derivative of the first one is four times second, plus the derivative of second times first. The second one exponential function never change, but you have to multiply it. Now you have to simplify it. Multiply these monomials together, so it's going to be a prime of x equal to that would be four e to the negative two x, and this would be minus two times four would be eight eight x e to the negative two x. That's your f prime. Since you want to work with it, it's always possible to factor out. 
So just factor out the exponential part, which is possible all the time. You can also factor out the four, but just do the exponential one because it's possible all the time. So e to the negative two x out. So that gives you four minus eight x. Okay, four minus eight x. Now we let it equal to the zero to get your critical, uh, critical value. So that would be e to the negative two x times four minus eight x equal to the zero. Is the product equal to the zero? So either the first one is zero or the second one. The first one e to the negative two x is never zero. Because e, remember e is a number, never be equal to the zero. So that's why you factor it out. So the second part would be zero, four minus eight x equal to the zero. So you solve for x, negative eight x equal to the negative four. So x would be negative four over negative eight, which is one half. So your critical value is equal to the one half. Okay, so, so it's very similar to the one that you did, but in this case, you're just using exponential uh, function. Now you drop it back into the function and you test it. You see, this is the function. So put x equal to the one half to find the candidate for the maximum or the minimum. So we find f of one half f of one half is equal to the four times one half e to the negative two times one half. We can use your calculator or this is simply simplify it as gonna be two e to the negative one or is it two over e? So f of one half is equal to two over e. You can keep it as two over e or just use calculator. Okay, so this is the candidate. Again, you have to test it. Is it a maximum or is it a minimum? Which one is it? Let's think. We get your derivative to do the testing. You see f prime is, is e to the negative two x times four minus eight x. This is your f prime. You have two choices second derivative test and like the one that I did you find the second derivative and then you plug in one half to see whether it's a concave up or down but uh, you know to get the second derivative you, you get very much involved you know the product rule etc but I'm going to do first derivative test for this one for the first derivative test you have to check a number before one half and after in the f prime to check the sign of the f prime you see that exponential part is always positive. So just check number in four minus eight X. So it's easier to use first derivative test. Okay, just show you that. In case of the ln function, the second is easier. And in case of the exponential function, the first is easier, but again, it's up to you. So if you want to use the first, you have to give us a chart, okay? So you have to give a chart. This is going to be your chart. Your chart would be X, which going from negative infinity to positive infinity. The critical value is one half. And you have to check the sign of the F prime. F prime, zero at the one half. And this is your F of X. So we're just testing one half and two over E. You see, I have two partition, one, two. You have to tell us what is the sign of the F prime between negative infinity and one half and between one half and positive infinity. You see, this is your F prime. And again, we're just checking in four minus eight. So we pick a number here like zero. If you put the zero in four minus eight X, you see four minus eight, times zero would be four, it's positive. So F prime is positive and the function is increasing. 
You don't need to substitute into E function because E is a positive number. Then you pick a number here between one half and positive infinity, of course, you know, one. If you put the one in four minus eight, that give you four minus eight, one times one. So that give you four minus eight is a negative four. It's a negative. So this is negative and this is going down. Up, down, maximum. You see, this is going to be the test that you're going to use. So you know that when it's uh, positive, the, fine, the graph is increasing, then the decreasing. So the conclusion is that f of one half equal to the one two over e is the maximum. So the maximum value of the function is simply two over e. It's going to be a relative maximum again, but you don't have anything else when you say relative you compare it to something else. There is no something else. So this means this is going to be T maximum. Okay, so you combine these together, that would be a kind of two, two possibilities for the optimization problems. So you may get one for the max and the mean for the log function, or you may get it for the exponential one, or you may get both of them. So be ready for it. Okay, so this is uh, the final part b any question so uh, you have all the other solutions but uh, you don't have anything for the mean value theorem so i'm going to give you that mean value theorem because we give you one question all the other questions are going to be mostly of a type of the ln function exponential function substitution method but you need the mean value theorem so again this is uh, from the review and that's the question number one and this question is related to the mean value theorem. We want to determine. Okay, because of the calculus tool in future, we check this one. Determine whether. Okay, whether the mean value theorem. That's it, mean value theorem. Remember, MVT can be applied. Can be applied. Okay, for this uh, function. And uh, if so, you have to find all values of C. Find all values of C. So we have a couple of them over here. I do the part uh, B for you, which is more interesting. And again, you have to you know, go back to your, you want to get the solution of this problem, you must go back to that, your test two probably, that's one. Okay, so the function is this one. F of X equal to the X cubed minus three X plus three plus two. And you want to do it on this interval, interval of a negative two and two. The last time that we gave you this one on the test, everybody got it right. So you should be able to do it the same, okay, on the on the final. Now, there are two conditions that you have to check, continuity and differentiability. If these two conditions satisfy, the mean value theorem can be applied. And you have to write it down. You see it's a polynomial. So it's continuous. And we can find the derivative of this function. So it's differentiable. So this is the way we are going to write it down. Solution. The first condition, you just show that, you see part one. You can call it one. You say that F is a polynomial. F is a polynomial. And uh, so is continuous. It's going to be continuous everywhere, but you want it only on the closed interval. So you just mention it on that closed interval. That's conditional. If you don't write it down, you know you get some point out. Okay, so that's continuity. Second one, differentiability. Differentiate it. Find the f prime of x. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3. 
since you can find the derivative of the function, so the function is differentiable. And f is differentiable. It's going to be differentiable. Again, it's differentiable everywhere, but you want it only on open interval. So open interval. So both conditions satisfy. Okay, so this means condition satisfy. Mean value theorem, MVT, can be applied. Can be applied to find a number C, to find a number C, such that, remember, such that this condition, and number C inside, inside a negative two and two. Okay, such that the mean value equation satisfied. Remember, f prime of c equal to f of b minus f of a. b is the bigger number, a is the smaller one. So f of two minus f of negative two divided by two minus negative two. Make sure to write this correct. Okay, the bottom one is b minus a. So there is going to be a double negative over here that you have uh, you have to take uh, take care of it. So this would end up with f of two minus f of negative two. The bottom one would be four. So what you have to do you have to bring this f of two, f of negative two, and the f prime of c. Then solve. Okay, so for c. So we go and uh, we provide this f of two, go to the function, find f of two. So f of two is equal to, that give you two cubed minus three times two plus two. Two cubed would be eight minus six plus two. So that give you four and to f of two. Then you find f of negative two, f of negative two, is going to be negative two cubed minus three times the negative two plus two. So negative cube, uh, two cubed would be negative eight plus six plus uh, two. Okay, so that give you, that give you zero. Okay, negative two cubed would be negative eight and the positive six and two. So that's going to be f of negative two find f prime of c f prime of c you see f prime of x is uh, 3x squared minus 3 so f prime of c replace the x by c that give it 3c squared minus 3 so go back substitute here and solve for c so this is going to be the result f prime of c is 3c squared minus 3 equal to f of 2 is equal to 4 minus f of negative 2 is equal to the 0 divided by 4. You stay to the right to simplify it, so that gives you 4 over 4, which is 1. You bring the 1 to the other side and you decide how you're going to solve that equation. So that gives you 3c squared minus 3 minus 1 equal to the 0. So that's a 3c squared minus 4 equal to 0. If there are three terms, you use quadratic formula or factoring. If it's going to be only two terms like this, you just move the 4 to the other side and solve for c. So that gives it 3c squared equal to 4. So c squared equal to the 4 third. You take the square root, c would be positive negative a square root of a 4 third. Now, <clears throat> you have to find these values to check to make sure that they are inside. You have two choices. Uh, you can, uh, if you want to uh, stay in radical form, you have to take the, you know, the square root of the top and the bottom and simplify it. You see, if you want to continue in this form, that give you radical four over radical three. So that would be positive negative two over radical three. But eventually you have to use your calculator your calculator to estimate this number, okay? So we can do it here. So for example, 
And this is uh, going to be the case with my calculator, a square root of the four. <clears throat> okay, for third is equal to the 1.15. So uh, C is going to be equal to the positive negative 1.115. Just to make sure the number are going to be inside, both of them are inside this interval. So you are going to accept the both of them. Uh, you must have one, okay? But at least one. So if you get anything more than one, you have to test it. You have to test it and make sure that you know you are going to accept both solutions. Okay, so it's a, it's kind of a straight uh, forward argument. Uh, you did have it uh, on your uh, previous test, so just uh, double check it. Then you'll be able, you know, to to to, to do it for us. Okay, this is part one. Um, the part uh, C is a rational form. Uh, part C, in fact, is not satisfying. So I just explained that one too, but the one that you see on the final, it does work and then you have to find the C for us. Okay, but uh, for example, in uh, part uh, C, the function is uh, F of X, F of X equal to the X minus one, X plus one over X. And you want to do it on this interval, interval of a negative one and two. Okay. You can reject it right away because this is a rational function. The denominator would be zero at x equal to the zero. So this function is not continuous at x equal to the zero, and zero is inside this interval. So we cannot use them in value theorem. Okay, so the solution is going to be f is not continuous, not continuous, okay, when x is equal to the zero. Now you explain that, that x equal to the zero is inside, inside this interval. And so MVT cannot be applied because we don't get the continuity. MVT cannot be, be applied. So this is the case that you know you may reject it. But the one that you see on the test, it, it does satisfy and then you get the result. Okay, uh, that's it. You have the solution for all the other one that uh, we did before. So you can study those and your uh, Okay, and your, your practice quiz number four and the practice test number three. And do your quiz again, I'll check it. You know, I give you the solution as is. So two extra questions are gonna be inverse circumvented function, you differentiate it and the integrate it. Okay, so uh, as I told you, I, just, uh, I post this one. So you have the solution to, the, to your quiz. Okay, and there is an extra three that I'm going to check it. Uh, so uh, good luck with your final. Any question? So there is not going to be any surprise on the final. So get the review, topic on the review, plus the 13 question, do 12. And when you want to start your test, my recommendation is just uh, go over the problems first. Some of them are short and easy to apply. So you better do those first. There are a couple of them that it may take more time or maybe sometimes you feel uncomfortable. So do the other one. Otherwise it can be done in two hours and nothing to worry about. Okay, and when you're done, as I talk about it, your final grade would be posted on Friday. And if you have any question about it, you just email me on Friday only because otherwise it would be submitted and then I cannot, you know, I cannot change it. So just uh, let me know if you have any question. I'll be available uh, uh, today at uh, between five and six, which is my office hours. Uh, if you have any question or if you want to come, send me an email first and then 
use the same link after Zoom link and come and I'll be happy to answer your question. Okay, have a good one and good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you.